commission meeting to order. If you'd stand with us, uh, Commissioner Wilder will lead us our invocation. Commissioner Henderson will lead us in the pledge. And gentlemen, if I could get you to, to remove your covers for the rest of the meeting, I'd appreciate it. Caps off, please. Thank you. How about with us? Lord, we're, thank you again. Um, we thank you for many blessings you bestow upon our country this day. <coughs> we ask you to look over all those that work here in the county, the staff, first responders, and look after us and our safety. We ask that you look upon us and give us wisdom, give us advice we need to help make the best decision for you. Someone else that has a, an issue. All these things in Jesus' name we ask. Thank you. Be seated. If I could remind you to please silence your cell phones. Uh, we do have a full house. Um, I'll ask right now, how many folks are here for the Mulliken Road rezoning? Raise your hands. Are there any people here that are wanting to, to address us in the public hearing regarding the uh, subsidized housing issues? Okay. If, you, if there were, I was going to ask you to, to wait outside and let some more folks in. Uh, ladies, how are we going to accommodate these extra folks that are outside so we can try to get everybody inside? We've got a couple of chairs right over here. And we do have one, two up at the front table. You're welcome to sit there as well. And don't be shy. We've got seats here at the front table. And if we've got family members here, you all can sit closer together. So, not you two. Y'all got to spread out. A little. Okay, we uh, we do have all four commissioners uh, present tonight. We're glad to see uh, Commissioner Henderson back. He's been dealing with some family issues, but uh, he's always a, a very very strong presence to have with us. Gentlemen, you've had a chance to read the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, if there are no changes or amendments, I need a motion for approval. I move. Do we hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve the minutes passes 4-0 with one abstention since he was absent at that meeting. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you've also had a chance to, uh, to uh, look at the agenda tonight. If there are any additions or modifications to the agenda, I need that now. If not, I need a motion for approval as the agenda was presented. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Motion to approve the agenda passes 5-0. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to clarify that the Planning Commission is a recommending body to the Columbia County Board of Commissioners. The decisions made on rezoning and variance requests tonight will be forwarded to the commissioners for final action on August 18, 2020 at 6 p.m. in these chambers. If you wish to address the Board of Commissioners at their meeting, please see Ms. Kara Harden, and she'll give you a request to speak for them. We're less formal in this setting. Uh, if you have uh, in our public hearing section or in the, uh, the, uh, the section where we allow for public comments, if you raise your hand, we'll call you up to the microphone and give you three to five minutes uh, to give your opinion either for or against or in, in the, uh, the uh, public comment section if there's anything else in the county that you'd like to comment about to have it uh, put on our record. Uh, I know the rezoning request tonight may be emotional for some folks, but I'm going to ask you to please treat each other re with respect. If you don't, I will ask you to leave the room. Um, we want to give everybody an opportunity to address us. I'll ask you to not be repetitive, if at all possible. If you have one or two people that talk about traffic, great, we got traffic. If you've got one or two people that speak uh, in regards to schools and overcrowding, that's sufficient. We get it. So if you have anything new to add to the conversation, 
Uh, we'll call you up, give you three to five minutes. The vice chair will be running a timer, and when we get close, I'll ask you to yield for the next person. So if you do want to address us, just raise your hand. We'll call you up. If you're a homeowners association or, or here with a home, uh, person representing a homeowners association, please let them go first because they may cover some ground that you would have covered and we can continue on to other people. That being said, Mr. Butler, we have a massage uh, operator's license. Since you're the professional, we'll let you tell us all about it. Yep, so this is a request for a massage operator's license by Janet Knott, DBA for doing business as professional touch massage at 42 Cent Columbia Road, Building 4. Also, a massage from this location. On Tuesday, this was approved by the Board of Commissioners for her conditional use. Uh, she meets all requirements of the ordinance and staff recommends approval. Okay, gentlemen, any questions? I'll need a motion to approve, deny, or to table. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve massage operator's license for Knox professional touch massage. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to approve carries 5-0. Uh, we do have a couple of things that are uh, approved administratively. Uh, Mr. Sterling, could you, just for, for everybody's edification here, just give a, an idea of, of what staff approves and then what, what is triggered to come to us, since I know there are a lot of folks that have never been to one of these meetings before. For, for the most part, uh, staff's very limited in what we can review and approve administratively. Uh, it's going to be minor things like a setback, a couple feet off of the required setback, um, a couple other You're minor. You're like 10%? Yeah. On that? Yeah, 10% of the, the required um, setback, whether that's front side or rear. Um, you know, usually it's something very minor of that sort. Anything beyond that is going to go to the Planning Commission for review, uh, either review and approval, or in, this, in most cases, recommendation to County Commission. So for the most part, staff does very little administrative review and approvals. Most of it's going to be uh, planning commission recommendation and county commission approval. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, with that, Mr. Butler, uh, file MW20-08-01. This is a request for a minor waiver. Uh, not a request, actually, information about a minor waiver. Uh, MW20801 uh, was at 3529 Rainbow Street. Uh, the request was to reduce the front setback from 50, from 50 feet from the center line to 45 feet. It was approved back on July 13th. The location of the property over on Rainbow, in, on Rainbow Street. Currently zoned R3, as you see here. Also, the aerial view of the property. You can see the old garage that is there, uh, right there. And the plat of the property. And they were doing a garage that you can see the, the 50 foot front setback here. They went into that by five feet, and this was approved back um, in July. All right, thanks, sir. Gentlemen, uh, rather than stand, we've got a couple of empty chairs. We've got one here in the front, one here, one over on this side. If I could ask you to please be seated. Thank you very much. And uh, we've got a temporary use authorization that's also presented as information only. Ms. Bolte. Yes, sir. This is a temporary use authorization for the sales trailer for the Greenpoint subdivision. It's currently a PRD, planned residential development. And this is at 5105 Huntley Trail and was approved on July 21st. This is the location, uh, kind of the first property in on the right um, off of their new roundabout in phase 1A of Greenpoint. And their site plan, they are putting the temporary trailer there and developing it similar to ones we've seen in other subdivisions they've done. And this has already been approved by staff. Thank you, ma'am. And Ms. Neal, got temporary use authorization, tax map 079, parcel 241. Yes, sir. This is a temporary use authorization that we approved on July 23rd for 286 Falling Walls Road on 9.4 acres. It was zoned last year to S1 Special for Enopian Bible Theater. They are currently um, construct, under construction for the property, and they're requesting, had requested just to have a construction office storage building on the back of the property. This shows the location of the site on Flowing Wells Road, the S1 special zoning, and the location of the storage building there on the back of the property. And again, this was approved on July 23rd. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Okay, we have no preliminary plats, final plats, plan revisions. We'll go straight to the public hearing. Uh, Ms. Bolte, file RZ 20801. 
Yes, sir, this is a request for a rezoning from R1 single family residential to R2 single family residential um, off Mullican Road. Uh, this property is located on kind of the northwest side of Mullican Road and is currently zoned R1 single family residential. Uh, surrounding properties are a mix of residential zonings. We cover pretty much the entire spectrum in the surrounding neighborhoods with R1, R1A, R2, R3, and PUD all in the same vicinity. Uh, this is an area of the site. It is currently undeveloped. And the existing site, um, see the, the existing trees on the property. This is the plot of the site. And they have submitted a sketch plan. Now, we are not considering this as a concept plan. That will come a little bit later um, if the zoning is approved. But this is to give an idea of what they may develop the property as. Um, again, it is R2, so it would follow the county code standards for that zoning district, 10,000 square foot minimum lot size, 10 foot side and rear setbacks. Um, the assumption is that they would be masquerading the site, so the, they are showing the 50 foot buffer on all sides of the property. Um, that is within the lots that is allowed by our code. Um, some of our uh, reviewers uh, did note that there are some state waters that are not yet shown on the sketch plan. Again, this is why it's not really a full concept. They haven't done the detailed existing conditions and really done the, the engineering work to get it to that stage. Um, but that's something they'll have to take into consideration when they go into a more detailed design work. Um, the zoning also doesn't guarantee them a lot count, so currently this is showing 55 lots. That number may very well change before you see it again for concept and then for preliminary plat. In terms of future land use, this property is in uh, the neighborhood's character area. Um, this area is intended to provide for um, new subdivision development at densities of one to four units per acre. Um, there, right around that with this development, 55 lots on the, the 33 acres, they are in that range. Um, and surrounding development is similar in density. We have a range of lot sizes in this area. Um, most of the neighborhoods were, were rezoned in the 90s, early 2000s around it, um, but that kind of runs the gamut, everything from lots as small as 6,000 square feet up to the, the 10 and 12,000 that this neighborhood's asking for. Staff is recommending approval um, with a couple conditions. that They do provide sidewalks and that they provide a crosswalk to connect to the existing sidewalk on Mullican Road. Um, and traffic engineering has some, some details on where that crosswalk should be located. And that concludes the staff recommendation. Okay. Gentlemen, any questions of staff? Okay. Uh, is the applicant here? Yes, sir. Would you like to come forward and give us any additional information? Uh, no, sir. Not. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, there, uh, again, what we'll do, uh, I'll open the floor up. I'll call on you one by one. And if you'll come forward and give us your name and home address, Mr. Kingley. It, it'll be right here on the screen in front of you. Hey, Andy, do you want to go ahead and speak now? Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address. Good afternoon. My name is Tanya Bonitatavis. I'm the Savannah Riverkeeper. My home address is 2837 Tobacco Road, Hepsiba, Georgia, 30815. Um, I have some handouts. May I give them? Why don't you start over here with Mr. Sterling? And then before. Okay. This is the letter, copy the letter you submitted earlier with the I photographs. I have not submitted a letter yet. Um, I, I received one that, that was from you from, from one of the folks that lives along Mullican Road. Is this the same document? Yeah, and it has some maps in it. All right, these comments are submitted on behalf of Savannah Riverkeeper. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization working to respect, protect, and improve the Savannah River Basin. We represent over 1.4 million people in the watershed. We have over 4,000 members. We appreciate your opportunity to speak on this rezoning application. We, um, we have some serious concerns about the wetlands on the site and the density that's currently being considered. Um, as you can see, I've, I've attached a couple of uh, wetland inventory maps and also some topo maps. Um, and there seems to be, in, in my opinion, 
far more wetlands on site than are currently being considered, which is something that was brought forward by staff. There are also look to be blue line streams on the uh, site. The problem is with the growth of development that Mulligan Road has experienced in the last couple of years, you already have one neighborhood that has impacted waterways. There is no requirement in any of this that these wetlands stay put. In fact, there is no guarantee that they would not be mitigated, and I think that would um, cause serious stormwater issues. Would that be Sumter Landing you're speaking of? I'm sorry? Would be Sumter Landing that, that, that's, that's affected this? There's, um, you'd have to go back, I'm sorry. There, there's the neighborhood to the top right, yeah, Eagle Landing. If you look on the Blue Line stream, that Blue Line stream has already been impacted by the houses and, and tunneled. So what you're having is an increase in stormwater. And the, uh, the landowners and the river itself at the bottom have been experiencing for years now siltation and also an increase in flow. And so especially with the density you're currently considering, you're going to increase that, exacerbate it. Not only are you going to put more water into that system because you're getting rid of the woods, which is going to cause burrowing out and, and continuing of uh, caving in. It's moving that delta down to the river, and that delta has grown significantly over the last couple of years. Um, the other big problem that I have is uh, with the mass grading of the site. Same issue. Um, mass grading in an area is going to make it so all the water runs out. It makes everything flat at the same time. And then usually what happens is all the mud starts running off when it rains. We call, somebody calls um, the city, the city or the county says, oh, well, it was too big of a rain. We couldn't control the sediment in the first place. And that exacerbates this problem, the, the problem. And unfortunately, that is trespass. And um, I think if you're not careful in the way this deve is developed, that's what we'll be complicit in is trespass. Um, like I said, the, the siltation of the wetlands. And then the last one, which is I agree with the staff that there should be sidewalks. Sidewalks um, make our community safer. So um, what we would ask is that for this reason, you deny this zoning permit at this time. Ask him to come back with an actual proper wetlands delineation, more outlay of exactly what they expect. Currently, if you take the, the amount of wetlands that I see and that density, I don't, I don't quite understand how your calculations work, but I think you're going to end up with much more, much more density of housing when the wetlands delineation is done. So um, we would ask that he do that first and then submit either decrease the houses or come up with something that's more um, more effective with the watershed. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Mr. Kingery. I'm Andy Kingery. I'm at 1106 Sumter Landing Circle in Evans. Good to see you guys this evening. Some of you I know and like to get to know the rest of you. I'd like to ask you a question. How many of you guys who are on the zoning board been in Sumter Landing lately? Any, okay, good. The reason I ask that, you know, we have a traffic jam, severe traffic jam twice a day because of the two schools. We've got one road in and one road out, and that's it. A couple of years ago, we had a fire. Burned the house completely down and scorched another one. Had this fire occurred at 8 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon, there's no telling what would have happened. I mean, it's just such a narrow road in and a narrow, you know, and Millican Road is not a real wide road itself. And there's an awful lot of traffic. It's a curvy road out there, as you know. And the traffic is just, just terrible because of the two schools. So I would urge you to vote against rezoning this and keep it like it is, because it, it could be, it could affect us if we had a tragedy in Sumter Landing. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak either for or against? Yes, ma'am, please come forward, give us your name and home address. My name is uh, Mary Kruko, and Would I'm- Would you spell your last name? KRU. You're being recorded, so if anybody would like a copy of that, KRU. Ladies down here, and they'll be glad to get you a copy. K R U C K O W. Um, anyone in Sumter Landing probably knows me. I go on the path daily, um, maybe four times. I, I'm an artist. My work is at the Augusta Regional Airport right now. I'm not a public speaker. 
Um, You're doing fine. Daily, I go back there. Sorry. And I take pictures of all the wildlife that's back there. It's a lot of different. Even eagles are back there. Barred owl nests back there. I have tons of pictures. What I do is I go home and I paint them. Um, I've watched, this was taken. This is an eagle. I mean, otters. All sorts of animals are back there, and I just hate to see that area developed. You need green space. I've lived in Columbia County all my life. I used to be in Woodbridge. I moved because of the construction. I swore nobody could build over behind me or near me, and now y'all are coming again. I just don't think it's right. You need to leave some spaces. The wetlands do flood back there. It gets really bad. My house butts up to it. When the dam was overflowing, I worried. And I have flood insurance. Some of my neighbors do, some don't. But um, it just, I feel real passionate about the animals, and I think you need to consider it. All right, thank you, ma'am. I'm not a good public. I would have been prepared, but I read the email at 6 o'clock. Oh, you're fine. Thank you. Is there anyone else that'd like to speak either for or against? Yes, sir. Please give us your name and home address. Yes, my name is Bill Jeffrey. Thank you for allowing me to come up and speak a little bit about uh, our neighborhood. I live at 912 Riverbound Court. That's uh, close to this property, actually, where when you come out of our entrance, it's off to the right a little bit. Which subdivision? Uh, it's uh, Mullet, I mean, um, Riverbound Court. Okay. Riverbound. The, that, that's the name of the subdivision? Yes, sir. Okay. Literally one road. Um, I think the, probably the biggest thing of all is the, uh, the discussion that was made earlier about the runoff. And we, where we live, going down our road, it actually comes down the hill from Mullican Road. There's a lot of water that goes down. There's a catch basin that's a little bit further down the road past our house. And then there's a circle. There's maybe about three more houses down the road from where we live. And there's one fellow that lives right across the street from where this, is, this area is being proposed. And the, since he's cut a lot of his land, uh, those people that are on the other side of the street from where we live, on that same court, that same road going down to a cul-de-sac, they're experiencing a tremendous amount of runoff coming back into the back of their lawns. So that, that's just on the other side of the street. So I could see where runoff is going to be a major issue. The other big thing, probably more than anything else in my mind, is the traffic. And with these people being added to being further down the street, there's Hunter's Cove and there's some people that live further down from there and then even Hamilton Crossing. All those people going by, even now, we have to stop at the end of our street and wait for cars to go by. So between that, with all the, I know further up the road is Sumter Landing. I realize they have issues, you know, up there with the traffic. And so by the time you get up there with the schools coming out, with the extra cars added to this particular subdivision, uh, that would be very difficult. So I'm just saying that, you know, if they would reconsider. And I fully believe in the, the, the wildlife. It's amazing down there. I just think they really need to leave. That's our opinion. Right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you letting me talk. Yes, sir. Thank Gentleman you. in the blue shirt, please come forward and give us your name and home address. Uh, Woody Bowles, 4041 Mulligan Road, my land adjacent to the property that's going to be built. When you said the land's going to be masticated, are you talking about clear cut completely? They, they will have to leave the 50 foot buffer around the perimeter that would be undisturbed, and then the the wetlands area most likely would, would remain undisturbed. That 50 um, foot from the house or 50 foot from the, the That is from the line. property line. Okay. Because my land down that long stretch. And you can you can touch okay. this and it'll mark. So off. my land, you know, runs all the way down through there. Okay. It's kind of a pie shape. And Mr. Waters is right here. Now, we have runoff from the, the road that comes actually through my property that you can actually wait board down through the woods all the way down to there and it runs like this to that wetland and mr waters we have a road kind of adjacent together and it goes down there we had to build a dam out of all the trees that fallen from the ice storms and blah 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 to keep a lot of our property from eroding all the way down in there so and i said this before uh eagle landing there's a natural spring somewhere in here and there's one on the hill. 
that starts, you know, up on the hill that comes down and that feeds that creek. And I don't know about this way, what feeds that way, but I know there's two natural springs right there because that's where the creek actually starts. All right, sir. Do you have anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Thank you very Did much. Go, like I said. Is there anyone else that would like to speak either for or against? Yes, sir. And then we'll come to you, ma'am. Please give us your name and home address. Dr. Rick Richards. I live at 35, 34, uh, 3914 Mulligan Road. Sorry, I have three residences on the house, on the property, uh, 30 acres there. I speak also for Jim McNeil at 3949 Mulligan Road, who's too ill to show up tonight. However, I would like to mention Mr. McNeil and Ms. Mulligan because I have spoken to both of them over the past 20 years about the property. And Mr. McNeil and Ms. Mulligan have been complaining about the property for over 30 years because of the development. And if you, I would recommend that this group, before they make a decision, pull Columbia County file number 07-04270, which is a record of all of the activity that's already been done on this, these uh, Mulligan Road Cove area. It includes about 50 different complaints and inactivity as a result of those complaints that have led to the problems. Uh, one of the things that was recommended was a Fluvial, F-L-U-V-I-A-L sediment investigation report on Mulligan Cove. It has not, to my knowledge, been done and can't be found by those people who have looked for it. When Mr. Uh, McNeil filed most of his complaints back in 2007, the uh, county did a very extensive, as did the state, review of the area, and they came up with 14 recommendations. And with permission, I would like to give those to y'all. recommendations I would like to highlight a few uh, flag in the computer base building lots and undeveloped property and upstream basin for a pre-permit development meeting to discuss sensitivity of the sensitivity of the area and BMPs sediment ponds required with the ability to treat discolored water develop a program to determine the rain determine the size of the rainstorm events so that the sites of BMPs can be evaluated Create a system to identify chronic E and SC citizen service requests and a standard operating procedure for addressing them in a timely manner before showing that the complaint is completed. Develop an enforcement package that provides for no consequence self-compliance enforcement and project delay and future attention, uh, future additional costs and attention getting cost consequences that are assessed and collected. Three current detention ponds and future detention ponds set up on at least every six months inspection that checks both the operation as detention and as they should be sediment traps and treatment for discoloration. Any future development of Mulligan Road Cove Basin shall have provisions for temporary settlement ponds intercepting all stormwater damage. I mention this because I live on the river. And every time we have a big rain, especially during the developments, and Sumter Landing was one of the biggest ones, we get an orange river. That orange river, if you will look on the map that I provided, I'm sorry we can't project it, but, but I did a Google map picture, and you can see the area with the drainage coming down out of the creek. And in this area, you'll notice the, the area I have marked B, which is not on the map, that's Deep Step Island. The sediment coming out of the uh, basin that we're talking about travels over to, to uh, Deep Step Island and has added about 30 yards to that island. If you look at area D, which is to the east of that, that whole area is now full of silt. It didn't used to be there. You can't even navigate through that now. If you look at area C, that's River Island, part of the River Island development. It's a banana shape there. The westernmost point has extended 50 to 60 yards west because of the sediment that's now 
settling in that area. If you look at E, that's the property, uh, my property, the wise property, the shepherd's property, uh, along there where we are having, and uh, George and Jim, George, George is here, Jim, uh, their property as well. Uh, the bank is eroding away, silting out, and last month I went in the river to fix my irrigation pump, and I sunk up to my gluteal muscles in the mud and silt that has collected from all of this drainage. I would request that the committee look at that documentation that is available in the county files, review the documentation that Mr. McNeil has put in over the past 30 years, and reconsider what's going on with the Savannah River, because we are silting up the river. We've lost probably 60 or 70 yards in width. Used to be able to navigate on both sides at my property. You now can only go down about a 30 yard strip in the middle because it's too shallow. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am, please come forward and give us your name and home address. Sarah Wilson, and I'm, uh, my address is 1154 Hunters Cove. I'm in Hunters Cove subdivision, <clears throat> and I think I'm pretty much speaking on behalf of everybody in my subdivision. And my questions are really more for Keith uh, more than anything, but from what um, I've been told and from the maps that you guys have given us, he's planning on putting 55 lots in there and claiming that he's going to get three hundred fifty dollars to $400,000 per house that he builds. Well, Hunter's Cove is an R2 subdivision, and we have maybe 45 lots in our subdivision that are this similar size, and the highest value in our subdivision can maybe be 260 at best. So I don't understand how you, Ma'am, how you, please address us. How Thank he's going to get that value for those homes in an R2 with 55 lots. Because... I mean, it just doesn't seem feasible, it doesn't seem possible, and um, just given the other houses that are across it and around it and, and the houses in my subdivision, I mean, it seems like he would be getting less and then it's gonna end up making everybody else's property value go down. I would be for the R1 staying R1 and having bigger houses and you know that he can actually get 350 to 400,000 for and increasing you know, property value for everybody down there. And also, you know, I don't understand how he plans to maintain that 50-foot buffer with this many houses and how that will, how that will be, uh, you know, left alone and nobody, no, nobody cutting trees back there and that kind of thing. <clears throat> you know, you, that's, those are my concerns along with everybody else's uh, regarding the river, the wildlife, and the wetlands. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Mr. Quisenberry, are you here representing Sumter Landing as their HOA chairman? I just want to make sure you had the opportunity. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak either for or against this particular rezoning? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address. Uh, my name is Bob Payne. I live at 4208 Airy Circle. Um, I'm with the wildlife people, the traffic people, and uh, keeping it as it is. Um, I know uh, I have friends in Maybaum, and I know that Maybaum went down there and looked at that. And, you know, they're one of the top filters, developers in Columbia County. And they said no more than nine or ten lots, you know. Myself, I would like to keep it natural. One of the only things I'd like to say tonight is uh, I'd be willing, if there were enough people here, to buy up that land and keep it natural and put together a co-op or whatever. If people would like to get with me afterwards, uh, whatever they'd like to do, I'd like to keep it natural. And I'd be willing to put in uh, a good amount of money to keep it that way. And I would think other people that uh, Sumter Landing, Eagle Landing, all of them that don't want people building behind them. Um, I, I don't think it would take that much. Anyway, that's Thank you, all sir. I have to say. Appreciate you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Give us your name and home address.
My name is Vernon Wise. I live on the river. <clears throat> I live uh, one house up from Rick. And I just want to say I've been there since the late 50s. And I know what the river was doing, what it looked like, how it flowed. And since they built Sumter Landing, that's when the sediment problem started. And here it is. I don't know, forgot how many years it's been since they built it. We still have problems up there with that red river coming down through there. And you're talking about putting up another subdivision up there? Uh, just can okay. I, just a that, point of order. That we're, we're not building. We're, we're not building a neighborhood, sir. We're we're the zoning commission. Okay. I've heard y'all several times. Oh, I'm, I'm from sorry. the south. I know what y'all mean. You're right. So, um, but this <laughs> that, is there is a developer that that wishes to build, and we are considering the, a zoning change oh, for okay. the property. So it's we're just considering a zoning change. But I understand your passion, and I appreciate yeah. it. I just uh, felt but, like I need to say. You know, that. I've been living there permanently since '63. But like I said, I was there, you know, in the late 50s. And I've seen, I used to swim out in front of the McNeil's house when I was a kid. Now it's, it's at least that deep sediment in front of their house where it used to not be. And it wasn't that way till they built that last subdivision. And so if they build another subdivision, that sediment's just coming right on down the river, um, right on down, to, and just it's going to interfere with everybody up and down the Georgia side. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be disastrous, you know, for the people living there because you can put that many houses in there, you're going to have sediment problems. That's all i got to say. I just want to thank you, sir. Thanks, make sir. sure, you know, Everything he said is true. Dr. Richard said we have, we've been having some serious problems. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. My Please. name's Tim Shepard. I live at 3912 Mulliken, 15 years. And uh, I'm kind of curious how this meeting works. These people over here represent planning. All right, Mr. Shepard, um, give us a comment. I don't want to get up. You're going to have conversations a couple times this week. And I want you to go ahead and address the issues. We're not going to go in and how, how the, the operation works. Okay? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. I just want to let you know I vote no. And I just want to clear for everybody in the room, everybody up here has said no, correct? I want to make sure Danielle understands that instead of smiling every time silt is mentioned. It's not funny. I, I don't think this is appropriate. This is not appropriate for this, and I'm going to ask you to use the microphone. No. Don't get a vote, sir. Please give us your name and home address. My name is Robert Sanders. I'm at 4020 Mulligan Road. I'm across the street from this proposed subdivision. Um, my wife and I bought that property back there because we wanted to be more towards the end of the road, minimizing traffic back in that area. And I know traffic's been brought up uh, and other things, but when you add 55 houses in there, even if you just say two cars per house, which most days or most homes nowadays don't even have two cars per house, they have more. You're adding another 110 cars back there in the back of that property or in, on Mulligan Road. So it just makes congestion even more considering the schools that we have and everything else. Wildlife, we love it. We have the deer come across onto our property every day. And we love that aspect. You take that away and it's gonna take the deer away too. And it's not just the deer, it's other animals also. So I agree with the people in the wildlife, and the traffic and everything else too. So when you're, when you're seeing wildlife back there, I, I actually saw a gopher tortoise back there. Is that a gopher tortoise range? I mean, does anybody know that, that follows animals and, and that far kind north. of thing? Is it too far north? Yeah, I'm not really sure whether there are any over there or not because I haven't all, gone over and walked around on that property. I know what you're talking about because I've seen them down in South Georgia, but it's actually not too far north. Typically follows the fall line, doesn't it? Okay. On this land that's up for rezoning? Okay, it wasn't on this property. Again, I haven't walked that property yet, so I don't know. You know 
Um, I was just curious because it's owned by somebody, so it's you know their their property at this point. Right, and that's that's why I haven't walked it because it's somebody else's property and had no press trespassing signs on it, so I definitely wasn't going to go over there. We've seen that up here before, though, folks out right. sur surreying about on other folks' property. But no, they like I said, the deer come across um, literally right in this area and come straight across over into our property. Um, Woody Bowles was up here earlier, and his property runs right down this edge. I've seen deer all in that area right there in the front of his property. So my wife and daughter uh, both love watching the deer come up. So they definitely do not want anything built over there that's going to disturb that aspect. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, ma'am, I'm going to ask you not to speak out like that because these are recorded. Yes, sir, in the back corner. And if there's nothing new that's going to come up tonight other than what we've discussed, I'm going to close the public hearing. Please give us your name and home address. Okay. Yes, sir. George Sleister, 3939 Mulligan. <clears throat> I think it was briefly touched on, but you could not get an emergency vehicle down Mulligan Road. The school is out, laid out, or taking in. Because the car, there's total gridlock between Con, Con Road or Con Drive <clears throat> down by the elementary school. So you, you could not get, if a fire occurred like you mentioned a little while ago, you could not get a fire truck through there. Uh, someone told me recently the school bus had to drive down the middle of the road to get to the school because of the cars, all the congestion up and down the road. Parking on the park. They park on the road. I don't guess many kids ride a school bus anymore. <clears throat> that, that's a big part of the problem. Um, we've had conversations with the school board, and I would encourage all of you all to call your school board representatives. His name is David Alloff, and to call uh, David Deakel and to call Sandra Carraway and talk to them about the traffic problems you're having. We've tried to do that. I would also call the traffic division at uh, Columbia County Sheriff's Department and ask them to patrol that and ticket it, people serious, that are parking it, there. It's going to end up with an accident for sure. It could be serious for that. There's also, I would mentioned, there's five subdivision entrances. If you count the entrance going to Sumter Landing, there's six entrances. and These are all on dead-end roads. There's, there's only one way in and one way out. Mulliken Road's a dead-end. Sumter Landing is a dead-end because you cannot go through Sumter Landing. You have to turn around and come back out. The same road. So when you start putting more and more houses into two dead-end streets, so Where's everybody going to go? You can't get out of there. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and yes, sir, and we'll make you the last and close the public hearing. Please give us your name and home address. <clears throat> Joe Edge. I live at 779 Bishop Circle. Uh, so I have had the property for sale for the past year. I'm the broker that's been marketing it. And so I just wanted to add a little bit of color to some of the discussion. And I, I certainly can be sensitive to all the comments. And, I, and if I'm being honest, if I live next door in one of these neighborhoods or on Mulliken Road or on the river, I probably would say the same things. Uh, you know, nobody wants development to be built next to them when they bought it, anticipating it being wooded uh, forever. However, I will say that in the past year marketing this property, there has been substantial interest. And the, the one fact that I think has been missed tonight is that this is already zoned R1, which means that you can already build over 30 lots on the property from what I understand. So one way or another, this is going to be developed as a subdivision. It may not be today, it may not be this year, but it's going to happen at some point. There is so much interest in land, particularly close to the river in this region, uh, that it's, it's just inevitable. And one of the things that the family has to be with, with marketing this property, was finding something, some kind of development that was going to be smart, that was not going to put 100 lots on it and just, just you know, look like Ivy Falls or something like that, you know? Um, not to pick on Ivy Falls, but you, you follow the train of thought there. So I, I have seen multiple concept plans with lots from 30 acres up to 80 acres on this site. And I can speak that, you know, the, the question on the home values, there is absolutely no question in my mind as a real estate professional here that these homes will achieve that value if not higher. Um, that's, that's an easy thing to prove and, and to show you on paper, but uh, these lot sizes are larger than normal. 
than what you would normally see on a development like this. And Keith, I don't know Keith real well. I know that we've seen some developments of his down in Savannah. I've looked at the stuff that he's built here in town. And I would much rather have him develop 55 lots here than wait five years for somebody to come in and, and build something else. The quality product that he builds, which I don't speak for Keith or on his behalf, but I can tell you that the quality of the product that he builds will improve this area. Um, now, I, I feel bad about the wildlife. I love being outside. I love the river. Um, I've kayaked down there myself many times. Uh, but I think it's an inevitable fact that this property is going to be developed at some point, if not now. And I think that we would be foolish to, to not go forward with a developer that we have a relationship in this county with that builds a quality product rather than waiting for somebody else to come in that's just going to build something that we really don't want there. That's all I have. Thank, all right. you. Thank you, sir. And with that, I'm going to close, close the public hearing. Yes, sir, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. Okay, we'll close the public hearing and accept a motion to approve, deny, or to table. I make a motion to disapprove RZ 20-8-01 because of all the circumstances. A second. Gentlemen, any discussion? Okay. All in favor of denying the application, raise your right hand. Okay. Motion to deny passes 5-0. Yes, would you like to make your comment? Yes. Okay. All right, with that uh, being said, we have no legal matters. Do we have any staff or commissioner comments? Um, just one thing I heard a lot tonight about the wildlife on somebody else's land. I'm an outdoor guy. I'm a hunter. I'm a bronze sponsor with Ducks Unlimited. I love wildlife too. But I know where my property line stops, and where my neighbor's property line starts. Just something I'd like to throw out there because – here, you know, we hear that, and I'm with you. I love to see a deer walk across my yard, but you know, we we can't tell hey, somebody. We, let's let's wait till public comments, please. You know, we can't tell somebody. I don't want you to develop your land because I like what I see on your land. Just, just concept I like to throw out when I hear the wildlife on somebody else's land brought up. And I'd like to uh, to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, it. it it makes our job easier when we have public input, and you know, again, it makes for a longer meeting. But this this is a venue where you actually have an opportunity to get your message heard, and I do appreciate you all taking the time because I know you're all busy, and I know you know uh, seeing all the mass out there, you're aware of the of the situation, you know, with the, with the pandemics, and and I do I do appreciate you taking the time to come out. Uh, that being said, I'll open up for public comments. If you'll raise your hand, I'll let you come up one at a time. I just want to say that our property butts right up to an island that the neighborhood maintains next to the river. And so that's where I see all the wildlife. It's not in my yard, and it's not in my neighbor's yard, other than sometimes the owl comes to my fence and the hawk. But behind me is the river, or a path to the river. Yeah, and I walk it in your I walk it four or five times a day because it's my backyard. So that's where I see all the wildlife. And I and if and I'm already seeing construction from Mullican at the end of the bridge. If you're on the bridge, you can see where they've already carved out some of the land. And I've watched the heron who nests back there screaming where he used not to. I can get real close to him when the school is in there. <clears throat> now I can't because there's too many kids and stuff back there. But I'm seeing a difference even in the wildlife during the pandemic. Okay. So I, I can imagine what more houses. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Already voted. I'm going to have 100 it down. Yeah. So if I could show you some pictures real quick. Can we okay, do this after the meeting? That after yeah. the meeting. Can we do it after the meeting, That's sir? The, That's yep. in my yard. Okay. Can we do this after the meeting, after sir? The meeting. You can it's you can visit with Mr. Now, if you want to address us, that's fine, but it's Oh not. yeah, yeah. I was just like I just wanted to show you. My name is Woody Bowles, 4041 Mullican Road. Uh, these are deer in my yard. Okay, that, that live my yard, their yard. <coughs> Any avid hunter would be glad to shoot that pet. Because that's in my yard. I that'd be ungame to shoot that animal. There's another one. And here's the father to all of them, seeing them growing up. That's turkeys, owls, owl pellets, you know, 
Sure. We have a we have a blast with the wildlife in our, in our Sir, we've already voted. We've already made a we've vote. already voted to disapprove this. I know, and I do appreciate okay. it. Thank you so okay. much. And you can it. you can talk to Mr. Wilder after the meeting too. Yeah. if you like to share Definitely. stories. All right, Dr. Richards. Uh, some additional information. Three nine one four Mulligan Road. Uh, Mr. Edge contacted me about this property when it first came on the market. He offered it to me for a million dollars. Said he was going to hold until he got the million dollars. I happen to know that uh, two, two individuals looked at it. A lot of people turned it down. I don't think there's much interest at all in the property beyond those two people. And the first one backed out because he didn't think he could make any money when he sold it. So I was in on those discussions. And I chose to stay, stay out of the uh, competition. However, if there is interest in setting up a trust, what you talked about, I'd be interested in staying in the room after the meeting to talk to anybody else who's interested. Thank okay. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And with that, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. To air second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion to adjourn, 6.51 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you coming out. The next meeting is August 20th in these chambers at 6 p.m. Thank you for coming.